Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking another deep dive into quantum machine learning and we're going to be talking about the quantum natural gradient descent. So before we take a deeper dive into the fun but complicated quantum stuff, let's take a step back and talk about what regular gradient descent is. So regular gradient descent is often used in classical machine learning when trying to optimize some sort of neural network. So for our case, let's say we have some random neural network that is parameterized by some vector of parameters. The goal is to adjust these parameters so that our output changes in some way. And in most cases, we want our output to have a minimized cost function. And this cost function is essentially telling us how well our neural network is doing. The lower the cost, the better. So what we're actually doing in gradient descent is we're trying to minimize that very cost function. And we're doing this by taking the partial derivative of every single parameter with respect to this cost function. Now this derivative is actually telling us which way sh we should move our parameters in the parameter space so that we move towards a local minimum in the cost function space. This is also known as the gradient. So the gradient actually tells us the direction of steepest ascent for that parameter. So what we want to do to move towards a local minimum is actually take the negative counterpart of that gradient. So right here you can see the formula for a standard gradient descent. So essentially what this formula is saying that our new parameter is equal to what our old parameter is minus some sort of step size or learning rate times the gradient of that parameter. So this is essentially all gradient descent is doing. We just keep updating our parameters by some small distance each time until we converge onto a local minimum. But see, this is where gradient descent actually starts failing because that small distance that we keep moving our parameter by is defined in terms of Euclidean distance in the parameter space. But the problem is defining distance in terms of Euclidean space in the parameter space isn't always the best way to go. In this case, we're saying that all our parameters hold equal value, which isn't true when we look at the neural network's distribution. Every time we move our parameters, we don't actually know how much our output distribution is changing by. So what we want to do is actually perform a gradient descent where our output distribution is changed by a constant factor rather than changing our parameters by a constant factor each time. And so this is where natural gradient descent comes in. Like I mentioned before, it makes much more sense to start changing the output distribution by a certain factor rather than just changing all the parameters by a certain factor because our output distribution is really the thing we care about. So in regular de gradient descent, we're essentially saying that we want to change our parameter by a constant distance while following the gradient. But in natural gradient descent, we want to do the same thing, but instead of changing our parameters by a certain distance, we want to change our entire output distribution. So instead of just changing the parameters blindly, we want to change the parameters based on how they will affect the output distribution. So every time that we change the output distribution, it gets moved by some learning rate. Now, the way that we start shifting from defining distance in terms of Euclidean parameter space into this uh, distribution space is actually by using something called the KL divergence. Now, without getting into all the nitty gritty details, the KL divergence essentially tells us how far away two probability distributions are from each other. It technically isn't a metric because mathematicians are very picky about what gets to be called a metric. So by using this KL divergence, we're actually making sure that the probability distribution gets changed by a constant rate each time instead of every single parameter being changed by a constant rate each time, which is much more efficient. Now, it's actually not that much harder to perform a natural gradient descent. Like I said, this is the formula for the standard gradient descent. And then what we need to do to make it natural is add a new metric. So instead of defining all our distances in the Euclidean parameter space, we have to find a way to define it in terms of this KL divergence. And that's where the Fisher information metric comes in. The Fisher information metric is essentially this new metric that we can use 
used to define the distance in between two probability distributions. Now, without getting into all the nitty gritty math details, the Fisher information metric is essentially a matrix that is the second derivative of our KL divergence, and I will link a link to its derivation down below. But for now, you're just going to have to trust me when I say that this Fisher information matrix is what actually turns our standard gradient descent into a natural gradient descent. Now, this natural gradient descent actually works really well when we're trying to optimize some set of parameters so that we minimize a cost function of some given neural network. But when we start entering the realm of variational quantum algorithms, there is something much better that we can use. Now, the quantum natural gradient descent essentially uses all the same principles of ordinary gradient descent, but instead of poking around a classical probability space, we start poking around the quantum information geometric space. The quantum natural gradient descent looks very similar to the classical gradient descent, but instead of using the Fisher information metric to define distances, we use the Fubini study metric, which is essentially the same thing, but it works in the quantum space. So this quantum natural gradient descent is actually really efficient at optimizing our variational quantum algorithms. An example of when it works really well is in the case of using a variational quantum eigensolver to find the ground state energy of some molecule. Let's take the example of hydrogen. So what we first want to do is derive the Fu Bini study metric that makes our natural gradient descent possible. And we do this by using this equation. Now this formula is essentially the recipe for the Fubini study metric, and what we need to do is take this and our initial ansatz to derive the Fubini study metric. In the case of hydrogen, this is going to be our ansatz, and from there we derive the Fubini study metric that we will be using for our quantum natural gradient descent. Now although it seems really simple to just define a new metric and start creating an entire new gradient descent, it's actually much more efficient. Take a look at this example that shows two different VQEs performing on the same uh, input parameters. The VQE using the quantum natural gradient descent actually outperformed the standard gradient descent and found the ground state energy of hydrogen much quicker. And when you really take a step back and look at it, it really is natural. I mean, our variational quantum algorithm is already poking around a quantum space, so it just makes more sense to start optimizing these parameters poking around that same space. But as exciting as the quantum natural gradient descent is, there hasn't been a lot of experimentation with this algorithm because it is fairly new. I will link two of my favorite papers down below, but it is really exciting to see where this can go and how it will be able to improve our variational algorithms in the near term. All right, so that's gonna be it from me today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a bit more about the quantum natural gradient descent. See you next time.